I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and borderline personality disorder. And what I didn't understand at the time was both of these diagnoses, as I'm desperate to find answers to why this has happened, why am I no longer able to function? How just, it seemed like overnight, everything was taken. I'm no longer able to function. I am mentally unsound. My, my kids cannot be around me. I was on 16 different medications and honestly, I was really only getting worse. Every doctor that I had been to just said, there is no hope for these diagnoses. You know, the pain that I was in on a daily basis, the mental um, torment that I would go through on a daily basis. And it's so hard to describe, but it was like I was living a real life scary movie. That is the best way to put it. My childhood was very traumatic um, and very. I lived in a very dysfunctional home. My mom, she was diagnosed as bipolar and schizophrenic, as well as drug addiction and alcoholism. My dad, he was in the mafia, um, so that kind of lets you know the lifestyle that he led was not a very good lifestyle. So my mom was not around much growing up. She was in and out of our life, and that left my dad to raise me. With my childhood being so traumatic and not really having someone to guide me and to help me through that, um, I turned to other things to, um, to cope. In my early childhood, um, I started using drugs at the age of 13 um, on a very regular basis. By 18 years old, I found myself in a full-blown meth addiction. I carried on through that addiction for several years and um, around the age of 27, I was diagnosed as bipolar. That is also when I landed myself in a dual diagnosis treatment center for the meth addiction and for bipolar disorder. Um, I had also been diagnosed with PTSD and severe anxiety disorder. So I had a lot of, of mental diagnoses that were going on, but they were not very severe in my eyes. Maybe at the time I thought they were severe, but little did I know how bad things were really going to get. And then I can look back and think they weren't too bad at that time. Um, I remember even when I was in treatment, I remember one of our main counselors saying, you know, when you go back outside these walls, beyond those doors, that that addiction is out there waiting. It's out in the parking lot doing push-ups. And every time that you go back, it is way worse. And those words I think of often because it does pertain to my story, but I was able to get clean when I was 27 and I was able to maintain that sobriety for a few years, which was the longest stint of sobriety I had ever had. Um, life was going really well for me. I was married. Um, I had two children. I was very involved in their life. Um, I was part of the PTA. I was a soccer mom. I was in school myself. Um, I was going to school to be a geriatric RN. That was my passion. And I was doing well in school. I was in the top 7% at OSU. And I had just started my own business. Life was going really great. And it was looking that I was overcoming all the odds that had been stacked up against me and all the statistics. And so it was exciting. And there came a turn of events that happened that I could see my mental state start deteriorating. Um, I had opened the door by using again. Um, and that is when 
I saw the enemy really come back into my life full force and I started battling suicidal thoughts. I was tormented by these thoughts daily, all day long. So I had a friend um, who had asked if I would receive prayer for these thoughts that I was being tormented with. And, and so I agreed to receive prayer. I will tell you before that, um, I never wanted anything to do with God my whole life. I can even go back to where that stronghold came into my life. I remember um, when my parents used to fight and I was just a little child and my mom was in the kitchen and she was threatening to kill herself. And my dad had related that to God. And so from that moment, I never wanted anything to really do with God. In fact, if anybody would ever bring God up, I did not want to hear about it. So when this friend had asked me if I would go to receive deliverance um, from these suicidal thoughts, to be honest with you, I didn't go with the expectations of anything really changing. Um, I went because I wanted her to know that she had done everything that she could to help me because very honestly, I had intended on carrying those plans out. And so um, I went more for her a peace of mind and I ended up being delivered from these thoughts. And so from that day, I had no more suicidal thoughts that it was just undeniable that I had been delivered that. And then I started thinking, Jesus is real. And it was amazing. I was excited about it. Life was going great. I really had my first encounter with Jesus at that time. However, I did not carry that through. I had I knew he was real at this time, but I never pursued it any further. In fact, I remember when I did receive the deliverance prayers um, over the suicidal thoughts that when I left there, I was given a piece of paper on the keys to staying free and I did not do those things. Um, instead, I ended up going back into the same lifestyle that I had been living before. Um, I had went back into using meth and using whatever drugs I'm sure I could get my hands on at the time. So I had fallen back into an addiction. Um, the people that I was allowing into my life at the time, it was not good at all. I can see through a series of events that happened within a very short period after my deliverance, within a matter of six months, how I just, I opened a door and the enemy came in and I opened another door and here he was again. And it just, it was like a domino effect. And it was, the things that were happening were so mind blowing that how is this happening to one person? Like, who does this happen to? And so I can see through those events and specifically a couple shortly after my deliverance that one of the events instilled a lot of fear in me. And so I began living in complete fear. And before I knew it, I was no longer able to attend school. Um, I could not go to class without having paralyzed anxiety attacks. I would have to go sit in my car and within a very short amount of time, I had to drop out of school. And so I was not able to continue on with that. Another event happened and I can look back now and I can see that this event instilled a lot of bitterness, a lot of unforgiveness, which are both things to a lot of anger, all three of those things are ways that we can open the door to the enemy and he came in full force and i i the more the things happened the more the events um that happened took place the angrier i got at god in fact i thought that he was causing all of these things um and if there was a god i didn't understand why this was going on all I knew is that I couldn't do much more. And I remember hitting my knees one night 
and just begging God, if you are real, just please put me out of my misery. I just take me home, whatever needs to be done. I just cannot do this. It had gotten to the point that um, I was obviously about to lose my children. I had lost my marriage at the time. Um, and like I said, it was within six months that I went from being very, very functional, having a great life to being completely mentally and physically disabled. Um, it was at that time that I started searching out for doctors to help me. Um, I was in pain all the time, excruciating pain. Um, my mental state was out of control. I was very, very dangerous. Um, in fact, I have my counselor and my case manager, they would visit my home every other day because I was a risk to be in society. My mental state, it was, it was dangerous. And so they would visit my home every other day just to ensure that things were okay. Um, and so it was during that time that I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia and borderline personality disorder. And what I didn't understand at the time was both of these diagnoses, as I'm desperate to find answers to why this has happened, why am I no longer able to function? How just, it seemed like overnight, everything was taken. I'm no longer able to function. I am mentally unsound. My my kids cannot be around me. Um, and what I didn't realize was both of these diagnoses are kind of the unknown. The fibromyalgia is the unknown to the, to the physical, to the medical realm. And then the borderline personality disorder is the unknown to the mental or the psychology part. And so... Here I have these two diagnoses that I've now been given, which neither one of them really have any answers and they definitely don't give you any hope because every doctor that I had been to just said, there is no hope for these diagnoses. You know, the pain that I was in on a daily basis, the mental um, torment that I would go through on a daily basis. And it's so hard to describe but it was like I was living a real life scary movie. That is the best way to put it. And I just watched as I just continued to spiral out of control and it was just getting worse and worse. And I kept going to more doctors and they were just putting me on more medications. And by the time, um, by the time I got to beautiful restoration, um, I was on 16 different medications, and honestly, I was really only getting worse. Um, I was in aquatic physical therapy because I had lost 70% of the function in my muscles. Um, and so it was really just holding on to, to await what the doctors and what everybody had said was my fate. And it was pretty much chalked up to you are turning out just like your mom. And that is what we were seeing. We were seeing exactly what my mom had lived through was happening to me. And so, um, so I just kind of held on and I searched, I spent days, I mean, all day, every day, I spent searching for help from one part of the United States to the next, from coast to coast, I would search for help. And I remember the only place that I could find um, was a place in Texas for the borderline personality disorder. And it was $32,000 at time of admission. And I'm thinking by now my family has already disowned me. I've lost my marriage. I've lost my kids. I've lost my home. I was down to, I didn't even have a car at the time. So now I've lost everything. And the only hope that I had was it was going to cost me $32,000. But God had another plan, and um, I was still battling addiction. Um, and I will share that I was completely set free from a 23-year meth addiction. 
through a complete divine intervention with Jesus. And that's the only way that I can describe it. Um, I will share with you a little bit about how that came about. Um, sometimes when I would go into these extreme fits of rage and anger, um, when I would be in these episodes, I would close my eyes and I would see faces. And so I was in an extreme fit of anger one day and I laid down to try to calm myself and I was scared to close my eyes because I was scared of what I would see. And this time I knew I had to try to calm myself somehow, some way. Um, so this time when I closed my eyes instead of dark and instead of all the scary faces that would normally come at me, this time I saw Jesus. And then I saw these tall green grass blades and out flew these two doves. And that is the moment I was set free. And it's such, I mean, the best way to describe it would be a divine intervention with Jesus. From that day on, I was free from a 23 year meth addiction and it was amazing. Um, but I still had I still had the other issues going on, but I am confident that I do know that he began that good work that day and he was faithful to complete it. And it's amazing to look back to see how his hand was on my life. And within a month of this divine intervention, I had an acquaintance on Facebook reach out and invite me to church. And I went to that church and within a month I was at a Bible study and that Bible study led me to a conference. And it was at this conference that I saw someone else share their testimony of how God had radically changed her life. And even though our testimonies were nothing alike, I knew that if God would radically transform her life, that he could radically transform my life. And so I grabbed a hold of her testimony and I believed her testimony. I believed it for myself. So I grabbed a hold and I told my daughter that day, she was 11 at the time. And I said, I don't know how, but that is going to be me next year. And within a week, I had a week after the conference, I ended up at Beautiful Restoration, which is a women's ministry. So as I entered that place, I knew what I was walking in with. These ladies had probably not witnessed or seen before the complete torment that I faced on a daily basis. So I walk into this house with these ladies who are part of this ministry. And I remember thinking, you know, they're never going to understand. Here I am coming from 23 years of using meth. And here I am tormented on a daily basis. Here I am just can my mental state is it's not even it's so hard to, for people to wrap their head around had they not been in it. These ladies don't know what I'm going through, but I knew that God had brought me here. And so I stayed and I kept coming back every week and every week these ladies were mentoring me and they were showing me the love of Jesus and and so that is where I really began filling up and they began teaching me how to stand on the word of God. They began teaching me the power of our words, that life and death are in the power of the tongue. And so I grabbed a hold of that. And every day, no matter what I was going through, I would, if it did not line up with the word of God, if it was not a feeling from God, if it was anxiety, if it was, you know, the thoughts racing through my head, if it was anything that was not from God, I would find scripture to stand on. So for instance, if I was battling anxiety that day, I would find scriptures on peace. If I was battling the thoughts in my mind, I would find scriptures on the mind and I would start declaring those out loud from my mouth. And it was amazing to see that things began to change. And even I shared my counselor and my case manager, they were with me every other day and so as they would show up and here I am just really pouring the word into me and, and counteracting everything that was going on, 
that wasn't from God. And so they began to see that things were changing and I was changing from the inside out. It was amazing. So I just kept coming back every week. And, and I remember a very monumental moment two months after I got here, even still searching. And I remember running across a YouTube video and I was so desperate to find answers because I knew I could not live like this much longer. So I would constantly just search for answers and I ran across a YouTube video that spoke of being delivered from borderline personality disorder. And I grabbed a hold of that and I believed it for myself and I thought, okay, this is it. I can be delivered from it. And I remember God speaking to me and him saying, Leslie, you need to be delivered from generational curses. And I picked up the phone immediately and I called the lady that ran the ministry that I was part of at Beautiful Restoration, I called Kayleen and I said, I need to be delivered from generational curses. And within a week, I had my first prayer session and it was amazing. Very Holy Spirit led, asking the Holy Spirit what I needed to be delivered from. And it was an amazing prayer session. But I remember as they were calling out all the generational curses, um, and then started commanding the spirits to leave that as they were commanding the spirits to leave i literally could feel as it left my body i felt it leave through my shoulders and that that is where a lot of my pain was stemming from was in my shoulder area and so as they command these spirits to leave i felt it leave my shoulders not only did i feel it leave from my body but the spirits were not allowed to stay at the home where they were praying for me. So as they commanded the spirits to leave, the front door to the lady's house actually opened and closed both times that they commanded the spirits to leave. Some may think that is crazy, and I would agree, and especially not having known the side to the spiritual realm. I remember even when I showed up at home, um, my husband i told him what happened and i told him i came home just knowing my life was never going to be the same i knew i had been set free that day from the mental diagnosis schizophrenia to you know just i could see all of the generational things that my dad had been involved in that i was delivered from those generational curses that day Going into that prayer session, I was on 16 different medications. Um, like I said, I was in aquatic physical therapy every week. I was seen by doctors several times a week. And from that prayer session, I was completely healed and set free and delivered from every diagnosis the doctors had given me. So from that day, I have not had to be on any medications. And it took a couple months um, for my doctors to really see, because obviously when you have someone who is in this mental state, you cannot just trust their word um, that these doctors legally cannot just let me go. And so they were able to stay around for a couple months and I was able to, to witness to them and to share with them um, God's goodness and how powerful his word is that when we stand on his word and stand on his promises and believe it for ourselves, just grabbing a hold. And so within three months, I was completely, I was completely released from every doctor, every counselor, every case manager. Um, but from that day on, I was off of all medications and have not had another pain episode another mental episode completely set free and delivered. And it's amazing that even my kids who were able to, to witness this, I mean, even it's three and a half years later and today my son was still talks about it, that do you remember when mom? And so for him to see, you know, he's 10 now, but to see just the, just the restoration and the healing that is available to us all. Um, but when there was no hope given that when I was told that people with my diagnoses that there's just no hope 
and to see that there is. But I do believe that sometimes getting our healing and receiving our healing can be the easy part. And it was keeping my healing that was the part that I needed a community and I needed a surrounding. Um, I spoke earlier of the first time I was delivered and how I was given that piece of paper with the keys to staying free, but I did not do them. And so this time around, I was able to apply those things, the keys to staying free, which are staying in the word and filling yourself up that staying in worship, prayer, and having a relationship with God, surrounding yourself with Christian, Christian fellowship, to think of all the things, the keys to staying free. But one thing through beautiful restoration that I have learned is my authority. And Luke 10, 19 tells us that we have been given authority over all the enemy. And when I learned that, I grabbed a hold of that. And it was, it changed everything for me. Sometimes we may think that when we're healed and set free that it just it gets so exciting that we just go with it and we don't realize that we still have a real enemy who would love nothing more to steal our testimony from us. He would love to steal our healing and to steal our deliverance and he will try, but you have to be aware. And so just being aware of his schemes, but also knowing my authority was changed everything for me. Um, I was healed that day also from diabetes. And one amazing testimony that I love is two years after I was healed, one day I was feeling a little off and I felt the Holy Spirit say, check your blood sugar. And I did, and it was high. And I thought, no way. I have been healed from diabetes. And so I began declaring that and standing on that truth and commanding my blood sugar to line up and as I did, I began checking it and it was dropping so fast. And within 15 minutes, it had dropped over a hundred points. And it was just amazing to see that sometimes the enemy will bring back those symptoms and make us think that we haven't been healed. And are we going to agree with him and use those words from our mouth? Because remember I said, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And so I could have very easily agreed with those symptoms, but instead I, knew that I have authority and I knew I've been healed. That is how I, how I was able to maintain my healing, how to keep my healing and how to stay free. So it goes to show that there is a very real spiritual world that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual world. And so all those years of searching for answers, searching for what was wrong, searching how I could fix it, when all along, if I had just known the spiritual side of it, the good news is, is that through Jesus and through the blood of Jesus, through the name of Jesus, we have everything that we need to overcome the spiritual side, that we have everything we need to claim that victory. Wisdom, this is different from religion, beautiful, bountiful living. My soul is in submission to.